welcome today. Um, this is our workshop on snowballing your research using citation sources uh, and other things to find um, resources when you're doing research. Um, we do have a variety of other uh, resource uh, workshops. We do have a, a variety of other workshops that will be coming up. Um, every Wednesday we're doing these until um, April 6th. So the next one will be looking at a citation managing tool. Then we're going to look at Chicago and Turabian citations, APA, and then looking at Zotero, which is a way to manage sources. So all of them very good resources as you work your way through graduate programs. Um, these are all taped. Uh, and all of the, as we get the information, as the, the tapes are, the, are edited, um, we will be publishing those here also um, so that people can watch them and, and go back and rewatch them too. All right, so we'll go ahead and start today. So today we're looking at snowballing your research, um, using citation searching to find other resources. My name is Terry Summy. I'm one of the librarians here. Uh, work a lot with graduate students. I work with the IDT program. I work with the education program, Hyper. So there's a lot of students that I work with. Um, and I'm also working on my own PhD and writing my own dissertation. So I kind of feel your pain in terms of what you're looking for. And so these are some of the techniques um, that I use when I'm looking for information. Um, and how do I build what I'm, what I'm doing? Um, kind of beyond searching. I mean, we have searching the databases where you can go in and do that. And I will go into the databases to show you some of these techniques and how they work. But there's some other tools out there that are also very useful in doing this. So sometimes we might feel like this going downhill. Um, this is a big snowball rolling downhill. And maybe when we're trying to do research, um, we feel like we're trapped in there. Um, but what we want to do is my, I use the analogy of a snowball because as a snowball goes downhill or as you push one along, and we really haven't had any snow here, so it's hard to explain it this year, but, you know, it gets bigger and bigger. And so this is a way to take a topic or take an article and make it bigger. And I'm also going to talk a little bit later about a concept called pearl growing, which is kind of along the same lines in terms of adding layers to that pearl. So when you have a pearl, um, a pearl starts out, what, is a, what does a pearl start out? Does anyone know? How does a pearl start? What is it? Uh, sand. Sand. Yeah, sand and an oyster, right? And then it keeps adding layers to it because it kind of annoys it. Um, so maybe our research kind of annoys us, but we have to keep looking for those layers. So we're going to talk about some techniques that you can do with that. Um, so, at the end of the session, we're going to talk, you should be able to use Google Scholar to find cited articles and related articles. We're also going to use techniques to increase uh, the literature that you find and the resources, and we're going to learn how to use databases to find cited articles and references. But I want to first get to know you guys a little bit. So, as I said, my name is Terry Summy. I'm one of the librarians here. I work um, with a lot of different departments on campus. I've been here a while, but I'm also a PhD student right now too, so I'm writing my own dissertation. So a lot of these techniques I use in my own research, and so I thought I would share them with you um, to help you in your own research. So what I want to know now is uh, what your name is and what department you're from. Uh, my name is Jen. I'm from IDT department. IDT, okay. Uh, my name is IDT? Uh, I'm Elena. I'm with the department. I'm just here to take photos. I'm a studies paper, so. Okay, cool. That's fine. I'm Sia, and I'm from the School of Business. School of Business. Okay. And IDT. Yeah. Okay. So we have IDT, we have School of Business. Um, kind of gives me an idea on what we're looking, what we're working with and, and looking at. So snowballing techniques. These are all techniques that we can use when we're trying to find information. Usually, the one that we use the most is probably going into a database and searching by keywords, right? Is, is how we usually approach our research. Or 
admit it, sometimes you go to Google or Google Scholar and, and you search by keywords. Uh, but that's just where we type in the keywords. We're going to talk today about another technique called subject heading searching. Um, we're going to look at author searching, um, citation searching, and then this citation pearl growing. Um, these are all techniques that I've used in writing my dissertation or even when I am just working on a research article because as part of my job as a faculty member, I do research. And so um, some of this helps me to do research in those areas too. So I have another big snowball here. So keyword versus subject searching. Keywords is how we usually approach a database. Um, we usually go to a database, uh, type in the words that we think of, and that's called natural language. So natural language are the words that maybe we apply to something. Um, so my topic, and I'm going to use it as an example, is emotional intelligence. That's, what, that's the topic that I am studying. So when I go in, in to do keywords, I'm going to enter in the subject emotional intelligence. Now, to make it uh, more specific, I might put that in quotations. The reason I would put it in quotations, which would be, um, you know, quotation, emotional intelligence, end quotation, would be, would be because that tells the computer search for those two words together. Because if I'm in like a psychology database looking for resources, it might also think about cognitive intelligence. And I don't want cognitive intelligence, I want emotional intelligence. So by being able to limit that and put it in quotations, it says, tells the computer, search for those two words together. Um, as I said, it's the normal way of beginning a search. And when you do keywords, it searches all parts of the record. So it looks in the title. It looks a lot in the author field. It will look in the abstract. And sometimes it will look in the full text. So it just really depends on, on which database you're using and what fields it searches. Uh, but it will search all different areas. A lot of our databases, Google Scholar would not have this, but a lot of our databases have what's called subject searching. And they have subject headings. And I'll go into the databases and show you what those are. These are what are called descriptors, identifiers, or subject headings. Um, they are what we call a controlled vocabulary. So what that means is when an indexing service or a database is putting the articles in that database, they will go through and they have somebody looking at those articles and they will say, okay, this article has to do with maybe customer service or maybe it has to do with banking or maybe it has to do with um, educational technology. So sometimes they're words that we may not even think to, to use because they're not, you know, educational technology sometimes is used, but not always, right? Um, you might think to just put in technology in schools or technology in what you're trying to do. Um, you know, or if there's maybe a country associated with it. Um, maybe the article that, and I'm thinking of one I just printed off, is emotional intelligence of academic librarians in Pakistan. So it's going to have probably the headings of Pakistan, emotional intelligence, and maybe academic libraries, um, or college libraries, or university libraries. So we'll go in and take a look at those. But that means it's more um, somebody is sitting out there and we've got, they've got specific terms that they're using. But it can be helpful, because sometimes it's helpful to narrow down a search, and it's helpful to, or to focus in a search, and it's also helpful to come up with other words that you might not normally think of. Um, and it's, this one only searches the subject fields. So unlike keywords that are searching the entire, everything in the database record, this is only searching that one particular field. Okay. Author searching. Author searching is maybe when you are doing your research, you find an author that is important to what you're looking at. For example, the theoretical framework that I'm using for my dissertation is Baron's model of emotional intelligence. 
So the author that I'm interested in is Rayvon Baron. He is the person that has written, that has developed the model that I'm using. And so he's an expert or known name in that field. So one of the things that I'm going to want to do is search for everything that he's written, right? Because that's the theoretical framework I'm using. Another thing I can, so I have my committee um, for, my, for my dissertation. One of the individuals on my committee has written in the area of emotional intelligence. So I looked, used search by her name to see what she had written. Because then that allowed me to say, oh, she's published these two or three articles. I can go ahead and use those and look at those um, as another expert or known person in the field. So sometimes you're going to run across people um, that have written things that are known in the field. Um, that, that you might want to look to see what else have they written on that subject. So you can search by an author field in the databases. And I will, I'll show you all this as we get into it. Um, instead of jumping back and forth, I'm going to kind of go over the overview and then I'll come back and, and do some demonstrations with it. Citation searching. So when you write a paper, publish something, what's the last thing that's there? The references are the work cited, right? Whatever is cited. So, so the references, yeah, at APA they're called references. So one way to build your snowball is to look to see what has been cited by that, not only by that article that you're looking at, but also who cites that article? Who else has used that article? Because if they've used the article that you're interested in, chances are, then it's going to be um, an article that may be of interest to you. It may not be, but it's a very good way to find out it. So a lot of times this is called cited by. Um, and Google Scholar does it, and then some of our databases will do it. And I'll go in and show you that in the different databases. And then the citation pearl growing. So this is my pearl um, and my shell. This is that relevant article. This is that article that I found that is perfect on my research. It's the exact article that I want. One of the things that I will do then is I will go look to see what sources did they cite in the writing that article because chances are they're going to be helpful for me. But I'll also go to see who else has cited this article. Now, if it's a brand new article just published, you're not going to have these over here, right? Until somebody else writes something. And you got to remember that a journal article, in order to get published, takes about nine to nine months to um, 18 months, which would be about a year and a half. So it takes a little bit to go through that publishing process. Um, but there is this cited by feature over here that you can see. So I would say, you know, things that are brand new published maybe at the end of 2015, probably will not be cited by yet. Something in 2014 could be. Um, and so we'll kind of go in in that right now. Okay, so I'm going to start with the library's homepage and I'm going to go into databases. Basically, we have a couple of um, different interfaces that are used in our databases. Um, we get databases through EBSCOhost and we get databases through ProQuest. There are, some of our databases do come from other companies, but I'm going to concentrate on those because that's where the, we get the majority of resources. And I'm going to, I'm going to do searches to help out both of you. So uh, because we have somebody from business here, I'm going to start with the ABI Inform. Um, as a search. So ABI Inform is a business database. We get it from the ProQuest company. That's what it says up there. Um, there are several databases that we get from here. And a, a little trick that I could show you is you can search more than one database at a time. So in my topic, which is emotional intelligence, there's not been a lot published in the library world, which makes it good for me. But there's been a lot published in business. 
and there's been a lot published in nursing, and there's been some things published in education. So then that helps me out. It gives me a chance to look at some other databases. So I can go up here to the top where it says change databases and click on that, and that will give me a listing of all the databases that are available through this ProQuest platform. And so one of them that's available um, is like the Nursing and Allied Health. There's also a psychology one that might be useful for me. So I could go ahead and I could select psychology and I could select Nursing and Allied Health if I wanted to. In terms of business, that's the only one, the ABI Inform is the only one here. Um, but it's one of the top business databases. And then I click on Use Selected Databases, and now I'm searching three different databases instead of just my one. Okay, so keyword searching. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in emotional intelligence, and then I'm going to put in the word and, and then I'm going to put in customer service. So what I'm doing with that is I'm telling the computer Look for words, look for the terms emotional intelligence, but I only want to know about customer service. Now, with nursing, I can look at patient care too. Um, this will make it a lot, this will make it narrow. All right, I still have a lot. I have 1,699 articles, so a lot of information. Over here are the different ways that I can narrow those articles. So I could narrow to scholarly journals only. If I didn't want theses and dissertations, I could pull those out. Um, I could narrow to magazines. I can narrow by publication year. Um, but I'm not going to concentrate on that right now because what I want to show you are the different references options. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. Okay. So let's say I like this first one. The role of emotional intelligence and customer service quality, a review of service sector. It gives me the authors, and then right here it has the word references and the number 11. That tells me that this article cites 11 sources. If I click on that references, it's going to take me to all of those references. And then on these references, there's also here where it says cited by 48, or cited by 9, or cited by 41, and this one has 31 references. So it's not totally consistent in terms of how many references it gives to you, but it does give, when it does have the references there, it does list them and tell them how many. Like this one has 74 references. So the references are how many times, what are the references that are cited by that particular resource? Um, and if I go to the full text PDF, go through the article, I can go to the end, And there's a, there are those 11 references that were cited. But I can jump straight to the references if I want to search and see what's available. And this will tell me um, what's available in this resource. So if there is an abstract, like this article is not in this database because, or in the databases that we're searching because it doesn't have this. Um, although it does give me um, a link that I could try to see if I could get to it. Whereas this one has the blue hyperlink, has the abstracts, and a link to full text. So by clicking on that, I can actually get to the article. Okay. Cited by means that 41 resources, like for this one, let's say I like that one, the impact of service provider, emotional intelligence on customer satisfaction. That gets me to this record. This one has been cited by 41 resources. So if I click on the cited by feature, I can get to, it's thinking, 
Um, I could get to all 41 of, I could get to the citations of all 41 of those articles. So once again, that's, that's growing my snowball. It's making it bigger, it's helping it. So here's all of those. Um, this is the original one, and then it says 41 documents cite that one. And so it starts showing you all of those resources. And you can see, if I like this one, this one has 400, that's a dissertation, that's why. That one has 481 references. So I could go look at all 481 of those references if I wanted to. Um, I could also get to the, P, the PDF. Um, this one has, oh, that's a handbook. I was going to say, because that one's got 1,200 references, which is a lot. This has 69 references. So I can get in, and you can see how, my, how it's growing. Um, by doing this, every time I click on one of these, I find more stuff. Now, that gets overwhelming pretty quickly, right? Um, so the biggest thing is, that's where it comes down to evaluation. What is your question? What are you looking at? Um, so for me, I've had to weed those out. I've had to go through and say, all right, if it doesn't work, if it's talking about emotional intelligence, but it's not talking about the bar at bar on theoretical model, I'm not going to look at it. Or if it's talking about something that's kind of off to the side, I might glance at it, but I might not read the whole article. I might read the abstract and their conclusions and look at their references. So trying to figure out, you know, what works and what, what fills your need is very important. What, is, what do you need to do um, as opposed to, um, and what is your question? What, is, what are you trying to answer? And that becomes very important in terms of, of looking at those. Okay. Um, the other thing that this has, and let me jump, I'll jump back into this article. Um, over here on the side, there's this documents with shared references feature. And there's 8,491 in there. What that means is any article that shares the same references that this article referenced will show up in there. So that gets you even more items. Um, so it really kind of depends on what you're looking for, but that would give me another 8,491 resources that I could look at. So if any article that has, they're looking at what this article references, the references are the cited at the end, um, anything that has something in common shows up here. There's also a related items feature. And what the related items feature does is it takes a look and it, it looks at the subjects that are in here, it looks at the subject terms, and it tries to find articles that are similar. Um, I would personally say that related items doesn't always, some of them will come out and they will be okay, some of them are not going to be on your topic. So it's just, but it's another way to grow this. Uh, one more thing, a um, couple things, um, citations. A lot of our databases have citation features, so you can go in there and do that. And subject headings. So these are the subject headings for this, the subject terms for this article. Or if I go up a little bit, if I just get to the abstract details, these are the subject headings. So you can see the subject headings that have been assigned to this are studies, customer satisfaction, psychology, and vendor supplier relations. Emotional intelligence isn't anywhere in these subject headings. It's just in the title of the article. So that's where it came up with. So if I was searching subject headings, it, this article may not have come up. Any questions over that? Okay, so I did business. Now I'm going to jump into education for you guys, for the IDT people. Um, I, let's see. We'll go back here and we're going to go to E for education. All right. So education in abstracts. 
same thing. You can search more than one database at a time. If I click on choose databases, um, because in my area, uh, I'm interested in the library stuff plus education. Um, maybe I'm interested in instructional design in libraries. Could be. Um, I, can, I can pick the library databases, and then I can pick our education databases. And then once again, click OK, and now I'm searching several databases. I'm going to go with the emotional intelligence again. And I'm just going to stick with that one, just go with it straight in. So when I did straight emotional intelligence, I get 2,163 articles. Now, I can say emotional intelligence, and I can put in, like, and librarians. And I go from 2,000 to 71. So every time I put another term in there, it makes it smaller. Um, so looking at these, we go into the record. These are those subject headings I told you about. These are keywords that the author supplies. But I could click on any one of these subject headings. So if I wanted to do the emotional intelligence, click on that. And I could have done that in the other database. Now it searches that only in that subject field. So now I've got 1,789. So remember, when I did emotional intelligence anywhere in the record, I had over 2,000, right? And now that I did it as a subject heading, that's cut some of those out. Um, so I'm going to pick this one. Some of these, and it's kind of inconsistent, um, but some of the databases here will have, they've got like the find similar results, they all have that. And that's like that related articles feature in the other. Some of them will also have uh, the citations listed. I'm trying to find one that does. Of course, when you want to find one, that's when you can't find one. Um, but they'll do the same thing. Over here, if there are cited references or something cited by it, it will be listed over here. Um, EBSCO is a little more inconsistent with that. The place that I really go and use a lot in terms of looking for um, looking for cited references is Google Scholar. So a lot of times when I am, I'm going to take this article because I kind of like it. So a lot of times when I'm looking for resources, and let's say I like this article, what I will do is I will jump into Google Scholar and I will plug in the title of that article. So I'm going to, I copied that title of the article and pasted it in here, and then I'm going to click search. So, does two things for me. One, I was looking for this article earlier, found it online, there it is. Um, the other thing is, I can look, and this article has been cited by one other article. So it's a fairly new one, this was published in 2014. Um, I can also do related articles, but that cited by one, I can go in and I can see who cited that article, because it might be something that's interesting to me. Um, so here's an article, Library Anxiety Among Non-Native Speakers of English, uh, where they went back and looked at that. Uh, I can also, I can search within citing articles. So remember Baron? I was talking about him earlier that I wanted to look at his stuff. Um, I can go in, Google Scholar has an advanced search. So I could go in down here and I can search by bar on. And I could put his first name in front of it. 
So now it found 79 articles that, ha that have him as an author. And you'll see one of these, this is actually one of the tests itself for, for young adults, is cited by 1,493 people. Um, this is another one where it's one of the major ones where he talked about looking at it. That one's been cited by 1,376 people. So I can kind of go through and look to see. Um, so this is one of the tests that I'm using. Um, the EQI test of emotional intelligence, it's been cited by 919 people. So I can go through and I can look at that, like this technical manual. I can go through and I can see what articles they, they have been cited. I can also go through because I can search within citing articles. So if I want to know um, maybe about libraries or librarians, I can search within citing articles, click that, and it came up with one. So I can narrow it down a little bit. Or maybe I'm interested in um, customer service. And I can do this. I can do the quotations again to make it more exact. And so out of those 52 articles, I have to deal with customer service. So it makes it so that I can narrow things down a little bit. But once again, growing my snowball, um, like this first article, emotional intelligence and team performance, the good, bad, and the ugly, um, has been cited by 151 people. So I can get in there and I can get to more articles that way. Databases. Our databases also have um, these search features. Um, they're going to have an advanced search feature where I could go in and I can select a field. And you can see lots of different fields, but I could search by author here. And so it's returned. Um, okay, so it found bar different places. I'm going to do it as a and I'm going to put it in quotation marks so it searches it as a phrase. All right, didn't like that one. Let's get rid of the first thing. There we go. Still finding the bar other places. So I would have to go look to see um, what happens if I do still doing that. Um, still looking for it. So um, sometimes it's just kind of playing around with it. I kind of picked a harder name to search. Um, could look, let's see, Mayor and Salove. Search that one. And see, there's the articles with Mayor and Salove. So you can do author searches if you have a particular author that you, you know has published in that area. Uh huh. It does, it, I would say that when, you get, when you're looking for articles for a particular assignment that you're wanting to do and you want scholarly articles, 
I would go to Google Scholar instead of regular Google. Okay. So what I would do, when I do research, one of the first things I do, especially when I'm at home working on it, a lot of times I would um, go to Google Scholar and just kind of see what information is out there. So um, I do not recommend just going to regular Google for, for, for coursework. Okay. Um, just because you're not going to get Scholar stuff, you're going to get lots of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also recommend looking at our databases. Um, in the area of business, so when you, um, if I go to the library's webpage and I click on databases, and I've got up here in subjects, and I click on business and economic, we have about 15 databases in the area of business. ABIM, ABI Informs, the one I looked at earlier, um, that's a really good one. And then we also have this Business Source Premier, which is a very good database. So I would recommend in the area of business that you, you start with like Business Source Premier, um, ABI Inform, or Google Scholar, or all, do all three. <coughs> this is, here's the Business Source Premier, and you said you were doing market segmentation? Yeah. Okay, so if I search market segmentation, and it's coming up now with some different ones. It's, it's thinking for me. So it's suggesting like market segmentation, market segment, market segmentation strategy, targeting and positioning theory, definition, a review. So I can go in and pick one of those and then search it. So there's like 34,000 articles on market segmentation. So now I can look at, is there a particular market that you were looking at, or something about market segmentation? Uh, I was looking into market segmentation for retail stores. For retail stores, yeah. okay. So I'm going to put in, um, and retail. So now it, it, now it went down to 1,865, which is still a lot, but I could, I could narrow it down. Or, I could go into one of these, like this first one, and that's where I could look at even that subject term. And then you notice that another subject term, maybe, I clicked too fast. So that was that. Another subject term is retail industry, too. So I might look at retail industry. I could put in retail stores. Um, but I could click on this one. Still get a lot, but I could put in um, and retail stores or retail industry. Um, so then that gives me a hundred. Now it gives me a hundred one articles. So it gives me something to do. Here's that where I talked about before. I told you what I'm looking for can't find it when I try to look later. So this one has 33 cited references, and it's been cited one more time in this database. Um, so that gives you some other things. Same thing. This one has been 19 cited references, and it's been cited by 30 other articles in this database. So that gives you then a lot more. So let's say, um, I'm just going to pick one. Let's say I like this first one. I can go through, look at the abstract, see if it's good. Um, and then over here, I can go to see what articles is this one citing. So these are the 33 articles that that one is citing. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Other questions? You guys just don't want to talk, right? <laughs> okay. If you don't have any questions, um, that's the information I have. I do want to um, let you guys know that I anytime you have questions, um, don't be afraid to ask. Um, you can come and talk to me. My office is right out here on the second floor. Um, you can email me, or you can talk to, um, like for you, um, Art Gutierrez is one of the librarians that works with you, and we actually hide him in the back. Um, he's, but he's somebody you could work with, plus any one of us. Um, you two are stuck with me because I work with IDT. So if you guys, like I said, any have, anytime you have questions, and you're trying to work on research, don't feel like you have to go it alone. Um, librarians are here to help you. Uh, we have people out at the desk, and if they can't answer the questions, they will, they will 
ask one of us um, to be able to help you do this. Um, so yeah, so we talked about um, searching by authors, if you know a particular author in the field that you could use. Um, doing the cited references and the cited by features. Um, and also, if you have a really good article, an article that you think is um, something that uh, is, a, is a pearl, something that's really good, you can look for who cited that one and who they cited. And that helps make it bigger and helps you find more resources. Okay? Well, thank you for coming. Have a good rest of your evening. And I do have the evaluation forms. If you'd like to take a moment to fill those out, we do look at that information.